I've attended thousands of meetings over the years, and I'm sure you have too. Some meetings are very effective, many are not. Depending on your position in your organization, you can spend anywhere from 20 to 60% of your time in meetings. Because many meetings are poorly planned and executed, many attendees' primary goal is to get out of the meeting rather than get the most out of the meeting. And then sometimes when we're on a team, you know, we feel a little bit uncomfortable because of the pressure when we're on a team of other people and don't want to really have conflict with our team members because, you know, we spend more time with the people we work with than the people we live with. And we claim we love them. So what comes into play in team dynamics is conformity. Sal and Ash used to draw three lines on the board, A, B, or C, and then a line X, and he'd ask his students which line, you know, is about the same length as X, and, but he first paid 10 students to all say C. So they go C, 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 get the 11th student and they go C? Because of the pressure, 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 pressure to conform. And then at the end of the class, everybody else is turning in their reaction papers. Is it A, B, or C? They all come in B. It wasn't an optical illusion. It was pressure. Pressure to conform. So what happens sometimes in team dynamics is you're the only person that disagrees and you kind of give up and say, well, if I was, you know, you know, I'll just go along with it. And it leads to this thing called group think. I call it group stink. In this presentation, we discuss the advantages and disadvantages of meetings and meeting alternatives, such as face-to-face -face interactions or by phone or in writing. Attendees complete a self-evaluation outlining what's expected of them as a meeting participant or as a meeting leader. It is eye-opening when people take a look at both sides. Every individual attending a meeting shares the responsibility of making it worthwhile. Often I get asked, how do you properly prepare for a meeting? Well, first of all, we have to decide whether or not we really need a meeting. So there's a number of good reasons why we should have a meeting. One is we want to make sure we share information. Everybody gets the same information at the same time. Also, it might be to receive and give advice. It's a lot easier to give it than receive it, so be prepared for that. Another good reason to have a meeting is to make sure that we can make decisions and people feel like they were part of the decision-making process and then we get some buy-in. Also, we need to have a meeting to make sure we provide training so everybody can understand the process at the same time and can support and encourage each other as we make those changes. And let's talk about changes. That's another good reason to have a meeting, to seek change and to provide people with guidance of what's going to happen next and how they should move forward. But whenever we have a meeting, the key is to make sure we have an agenda and make sure the people that are going to be attending that meeting get the agenda 24 to 48 hours in advance. Now on that agenda, we should have the topic, what we're going to be discussing. We should have the amount of time we're going to spend on that topic. We should know what kind of an activity is going to be involved, whether it's brainstorming or decision making or problem solving or information sharing. So we know what kind of materials we should bring along so we can be an active meeting participant. And finally, we should know who's the activity leader. Now, this is what I always suggest. If there's five items on the agenda, we should have five different people you, you know, being utilized in sharing that information. So whoever are the most skilled in that topic area and would be ideal in that activity, that should be the leader. So we want to make sure we know the topic, the amount of time, the activity that's involved so we can be prepared for that. And then finally, who is the activity leader? And if we can put together meetings like that, people look forward to coming to the meeting <laughs> rather than resenting the fact they have to. Meetings are expensive, but great meetings are well worth it. Groups possess a greater collection of resources than do most individuals. Pooled resources can lead to better decisions. Another benefit is the likelihood of catching errors. Also, commitment is critical, and people are more likely to carry out solutions that they've helped to create. This collective creativity generates options that no one would have thought of alone. <laughs>